So what this video is going to look at is the uh, global atmospheric circulation. Uh, now this is kind of a really fundamental principle of geography and underlines a huge amount of uh, stuff that we do in our physical geography. It's relevant to uh, talking about where our ecosystems are located and also relevant in terms of the track or route that uh, our tropical storms or hurricanes uh, take. So we start off with the basic tricellular model of atmospheric circulation. Okay, we've got planet Earth here, half of it, rather than doing a full circle, but the obviously works all the way across. And we've got the equator actually across the, the middle. Now the equator we know receives the highest amount of solar insulation. Okay? Uh, the sun is coming at it at directly above the equator, therefore its energy is concentrated over a smaller area and has to travel through less of the atmosphere, which cre creates an energy imbalance in the Earth's atmosphere. The equator has higher amounts of solar energy, the poles have less. Okay? And what the atmosphere wants to do is it wants to distribute that energy in an even way. What happens is then, at the equator, that high amount of solar insulation creates warm, rising mm. air. We know that when air rises, we create something called an area of low pressure. As that air rises, what it's going to do is it's going to cool and condense, okay, forming large thunder clouds or cumulonimbus clouds, okay, resulting in incredibly heavy levels of rainfall. That's what explains our very warm, but also uh, wet climate of the tropical rainforest. Once those, that warm rising air has, uh, has reached the, the top of the atmosphere, it will start to be attracted towards the poles. It will start to move both north and southwards. As it does so, it will begin to cool. Okay? And as it begins to cool, it becomes denser. And where warm, less dense air rises, cool, dense air will start to sink towards the Earth's surface. As it does so, that air becomes warmer as it sinks back down towards the surface of the ground, and it therefore becomes capable of holding more moisture. So where warm air rises and condenses to form clouds and even to rainfall, what we get here is very little condensation, and the air is capable of holding more and more water the warmer it gets, resulting in very little cloud formation and very little rainfall. Subsequently, at this area of high pressure where the air is sinking back down towards the ground, we get very dry conditions. This point at which the air is sinking down is roughly around the tropics, you know, Cancer and Capricorn, somewhere between sort of 15 to 30 degrees north and south. Okay? And at this point, we find our hot deserts. That air then, once it's somewhat down, is drawn into that area of low pressure. The low pressure acts a bit like a kind of vacuum sucking the air in. The air wants to rush in to fill that area of low pressure. Completing the first cell of the atmospheric circulation. Okay. We refer to this cell as the Hadley cell. This point here, where the air is converging in towards each other, it's coming in from both directions, from that kind of trop uh, the tropics, uh, we call that the intertropical convergence zone, or the ITCZ. The ITCZ is characterised by very unstable conditions, lots of warm rising air, high amounts of low pressure, resulting in that intense rainfall that we know creates our tropical rainforests. Now we're going to move up, actually, to the upper uh, sort of a cell of the tricellular model, the polar cell. Okay, I'm just going to draw it up here in the north, but obviously it would be mirrored in the south. At the uh, north and uh, south poles, obviously it's very cold, very little solar in insulation, so you've got really cold air. Okay, this cold air, as we know, is going to be denser, so it's going to stay to walk, uh, at the surface level, at ground level. Okay, and what happens is that air, cold air, is attracted towards the equator. When it gets to roughly 60 degrees north, so I should have put in here that we're talking kind of uh, 30 degrees north uh, with the Hadley cell. When it gets to roughly 60 degrees north, that area will start to warm slightly. It's moving towards the equator, it's receiving more solar insulation. And as a result, it will rise. OK, 
Okay, again, creating an area of low pressure. Okay. Once that air, in the same way with the Hadley cell, has been kind of uh, up towards the top of the atmosphere again, it will cool and start making its way back towards the poles. At which point, once it reaches the poles, it will cool so much that it again sinks back down towards the Earth's surface. Hence why at about 90 degrees north and in that polar area, anywhere kind of uh, north of 60 degrees, we can actually experience some really dry conditions. You, know, you would have heard of the Antarctica and the Arctic have been basically cold deserts, receiving very, very little precipitation. That is again because of this area of high pressure that we find at the poles created by the sinking air of the polar cell. In between the polar and Hadley cell, you have something called the feral cell. And uh, the feral cell actually goes in the opposite direction to the other two. If you notice so far, the air's been moving uh, towards the equator at the surface level and then towards the poles up in the top atmosphere. The feral cell is actually kind of driven by the movement of the polar and Hadley cell either side. And what we actually have in the feral cell is that air is uh, forced kind of towards the poles along the surface of the of the earth. Now this area is coming from kind of the, the tropics or the sort of 30 degrees north, so it's going to be quite warm. It's going to be warmer than the air at 60 degrees north. At that point where it meets the cold air coming from the, uh, from the poles, okay, coming in this direction, and this warm air coming up from the tropics, okay, the warm air is forced upwards and over that cold po uh, polar air. As it does so, we know it cools. Okay, and can condense, which we know can cause that rainfall and can explain some of the wet weather that we receive in the UK. That air will then start making its way, uh, this time it back towards the poles, uh, towards the equator in the upper atmosphere, where again it will sink, okay, matching that area of high pressure that we already have at 30 degrees north as part of the Hadley cell. Can okay, we call that, as I said, the feral cell. It's important to remember that this cellular model will mirror itself in the southern hemisphere. So the Hadley cell, then the feral cell, and then the polar cell. Uh, as I said, this is uh, closely linked to our uh, ecosystem distribution. As we said, at the equator, this intertropical convergence zone, you get that rising air, creating that, low, creating that area of low pressure, which results in high amounts of condensation and daily rainfall uh, uh, as that warm air cools and condenses. So we have our Tropical rainforest kind of found below that intertropical convergence zone around the equator. We then get our hot deserts in the uh, sort of by the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn at roughly 15 to 35 degrees north or south of the equator, where we experience this area of uh, descending cooler air, creating areas of high pressure, very little condensation. And then, as I said, we get our cool, uh, but very dry tundra climates or ecosystems between 60 and 90 degrees north, where again we have that high pressure descending air meaning very little rainfall but this time much colder temperatures than we do at 30 degrees north or south. Also mentioned at the start of the video that the global atmospheric circulation is also closely linked to our tracks or direction of movement of our hurricanes okay. and that's due to something that we refer to as the Coriolis force. The Coriolis force is basically uh, the bending or diversion of winds in the atmosphere caused by the rotation of the Earth. It doesn't actually exist bang on the equator, hence why you won't really find uh, tropical storms, hurricanes, uh, forming any closer to the equator than 5 degrees north or south. Now what happens is, uh, due to the deflection of the Earth, uh, the deflection of the wind movement caused by the Earth's rotation, uh, air travelling, particularly across the surface of the Earth, is directed over to the right in the northern hemisphere or to the left in the southern hemisphere. So what we have is our air in our Hadley cell, in this bottom limb here that's moving along the surface back towards the equator. That is actually deflected as it does so off to the right. I know that looks like I've gone left, but if you imagine that the air is travelling this direction, that is actually to the right for it. And what happens is... This air is deflected off to the right like that, which we uh, know as the northeast trade winds. Okay? The air is moving from the east to the west. Okay? And that's why our hurricanes in the northern hemisphere track from the east to the west. 
In the southern hemisphere, the Coriolis force is working in the opposite direction, and therefore the air is deflected to the left. Subsequently, air moving from that area of high pressure around 30 degrees south back towards the equator is deflected off. Again to that left. Uh, again, meaning that hurricanes again in the southern hemisphere will track generally from east to west. Okay, in the way that these are known as the northeasterly trade winds, these are known as the southeasterly trade winds. Uh, to carry on this discussion about the kind of surface winds uh, around the Earth, okay, we can then look at how the Coriolis effect then affects winds found in the surface between 30 and 60 degrees north. Again, that Coriolis force remember is going to be deflecting wind uh, to the right as it moves. In this case, the ferro cell, remember that surface winds are actually moving from the equator up towards the poles. And as a result here, winds are deflected in the opposite direction to the way they are in uh, the in between the equator and 30 degrees north. That has been deflected to the right in that direction here. Okay. So what we get here is the northwesterly trade winds. Okay. The winds are moving this time from the west towards the east. And this is quite responsible for a large amount of the weather that we receive in the UK because uh, low pressure systems that form over the Atlantic Ocean are then moved by those westerly winds okay, across the Atlantic Ocean and into the UK. Uh, same in the southern hemisphere, the wind uh, in the in the ferro cell that's travelling along the surface of the rest of the sun, remember, deflected to the left. So again, this air is deflected in this direction. Okay, because remember again, like I said earlier, the air is moving this way. So you've got to imagine that actually it's left, it's coming in this direction here. So again, we get our southwesterly winds. Finally, if we look at the polar cell, again, think about that Coriolis force. Okay, the poles. Uh, We've got air moving from the polar high, that area of high pressure at the North and South Pole, back towards the equator. So again, air deflected to the right. Okay. It's going to be moving in this direction. Okay, so from east to west. Okay. And then the same down in the southern hemisphere, the air is deflected to the left, not the right. Again, we've got that air moving in that direction.